Hmm. To powder coat or to lube traditionally? That is the question. Howdy folks, for today's video, I wanted to do a video response to my friend Warthog71 who had a question about bullet casting. He wanted to know the pros and cons for powder coating a bullet or maybe the reasons why you would want to powder coat a cast bullet. And so I told him that I'd probably try and do a video on this to answer his questions. That's what I hope to be able to do today or tonight, I'm recording at night, is just go go over or cover some of the reasons that I see as pros for powder coating bullets instead of using traditional lube. Now I know that there are, are multiple types of traditional lube. There's tumble lube where you can just squirt a bunch of liquid lube on some cast bullets and shake them up and throw them on a pan to dry and that works and is effective and is quick and easy. There's also pan lubing and lubri using a lubricizer. There's all these different ways to use traditional lube, but I wanted to focus on the reasons why I choose to use powder coat on my cast bullets. So I'm gonna go over some of the top reasons why I prefer to powder coat my bullets. And then at the very end, I wanted to cover some reasons why you would choose to use traditional lube instead of powder coating. And this list or these reasons are in no particular order. It's not like best reasons down to the least beneficial. So anyways, one of the benefits of using powder coated bullets versus traditionally lubed bullets is the amount of smoke. Now, if you shoot at an indoor range, which I have used some traditionally lubed bullets in an indoor range before. They are very smoky, quite a bit more smoky than if you were to use, say, powder coated bullets. So powder coated bullets, if you shoot indoors, they're less smoky. They, it almost seems like they burn cleaner even though they don't. It's just you get less smoke. And this is advantageous if you're shooting indoors or if you're shooting outdoors and you don't wanna smoke everybody out. So less smoke is a definite benefit unless you are shooting, say, cowboy action shooting where you want that black powder and your traditional lube to make as much smoke as possible. So you get the old effect of, you know, you shoot and smoke bomb, right? So less smoke. Second, one of the, this is probably one of my top reasons why I prefer to use powder coat on to coat my bullets versus traditional lube. And that is due to the fact that the lube, this is more to do with like if you use like a tumble lube, but I have had like um, lubricized bullets that had some extra lube on the top have the same effect. But I've had uh, the problem where the seating die gets gunked up a little bit so you'll get a buildup of some of that bullet lube that will stick to the seating stem. And what that does is as it builds up, as you seat more and more bullets, then it will actually start messing with your seating depth. And as it builds up on the seating stem, then it will seat your bullets deeper and deeper and deeper uh, as, you, as you go. And that is, I mean, I've, I've loaded lots, thousands of, of traditionally lubed bullets and I've had that issue where I just have to take the die out and clean it out before it starts playing with the seating depth too much. So keeping your dies clean, the powder coated or high tech coated bullets just do a whole lot better job at keeping your dies, your seating die clean and sometimes your crimping die. Along the those same lines of the messing up your dies, uh, for those of you who have dealt with the tumble lube, like Lee Liquid Alox or like 45, 45, 10, one of those tumble lubes, it's messy and it's kind of stinky too. At least that's what my wife and my kids say. They say it's messy and it stinks. And so those are 
two reasons I prefer to use powder coating is because of the messiness. Now, I guess that could be debatable because if you're not careful, you can spill the powder of the powder coating and you know that powder can get in a bunch of different places. But just dealing with the goopy lube of, of tumble lube, I guess it's debatable, but for me, powder coating is less messy, it's easier to clean up, and yeah. One of the arguments I've heard from the tumble lubers is that the speed, they say tumble lubing your bullets is way faster than um, baking them in a powder coating oven or like a, a toaster oven. And for that, I would probably argue against that and say that um, from start to finish, powder coating is actually faster than throwing the, the, the naked bullets into a pan or a little dish and shaking them up in tumble lube because of the drying time. So powder coating, you have the baking time tumble lube you have the drying time and I've usually when I use tumble lube it takes like I usually dry them overnight and so you know and, and I've actually had some people say you know if you dry them and then bake it for a little bit then it hardens up the tumble lube a little bit and makes it so it's less messy on the dyes but then you're also adding more time to the overall process whereas on powder coating, I'll just throw bullets into a sour cream container, throw in a couple teaspoons of powder coat powder, shake it up for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds maybe. Not very long, it doesn't take very long for me. And then you just dump them onto a wire mesh tray and throw it into a toaster oven, bake it for 10 minutes, and then I chuck it into the water and they're instantly cool, safe to handle everything, and ready to be sized. So. I would say that the speed benefit kind of goes towards the powder coating. Now, if you're using a lubricizer, that will, that's a little faster in, in a lot of ways because you are sizing and lubing your bullets in just a crank of a, of a press handle. So when you're, when you're talking about traditional lube, there's those different ways of doing it. But speed wise, I'd say powder coating doesn't take a lot of time. So it might be a little bit longer than a lubricizer, but it's overall less time than a tumble lube. So another benefit of powder coating your bullets is that after you coat them, they're encapsulated into by this polymer shell. And that means you can totally handle them. You can, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but you could totally rub your fingers on it and then and then you know eat a french fry and you're not going to get the same kind of contamination that you would with a traditionally lubed bullet and you know with the exposed lead that outer coating the the powder coating also protects it from say like oxidation and you know if the bullets happen to get wet then they won't get that yellow fuzz on them that you know will happen with the, the naked lead bullets, or I guess traditionally lubed bullets. I guess the, the tumble lube would actually protect the, the bullets in the same manner that the powder coating does, but the lubricized bullets will not be protected in that same way. So safe to handle, you know, just with the coating over the polymer coating over the bullet, they're safe to handle. They're protected from oxidation and stuff like that. Now, this next reason why I prefer to powder coat my bullets is because I shoot a lot of things suppressed. I have suppressors for almost, well, not almost all my guns, but almost all the calibers I shoot can be shot with suppressors. And I do like shooting things suppressed. So that means, yeah. well, so what that means is that traditionally lubed bullets, they lube the bullet as it goes through the bore, and then after the bullet is finished passing, some of that excess lube gets, you know, sprayed out of the out of the barrel. And you can you can kind of tell by looking at the the muzzle when you are, you know, 
after you're done shooting a bunch of traditionally lubed bullets, you can kind of see the, the lube coming out of the barrel. So uh, that is something that you probably don't want to have on a suppressor silencer that is a sealed can. You don't want to have that lube just building up on the baffles or the baffle stack. Hey, a on a serviceable can, it's not as much of a worry. I mean, you still have to clean it off, but at least you can take apart the, the suppressor to clean it off. So for the suppressor shoot, or the, for the people who shoot suppressed, then powder coating is a great benefit because it keeps your suppressors a lot cleaner. And people have asked me if Smashing. I notice any fouling from the powder coat on the suppressor baffles, and I have not seen that after however many thousands of rounds I've shot through my suppressors. Wow. Now, one benefit that I've seen with coating your bullets with you know powder coat or high tech is that it seems like the bullets are a little bit less sensitive to the bullet hardness and alloy that you choose to use. Uh, when I say that, there still is some of the science of alloying the, you know, the quantity of, you know, lead, tin, antimony, etc., to get the right hardness and the properties of the lead alloy. So if you want, for example, if you want the bullet to expand, you have to have a little bit more tin and less antimony, which provides that crystalline uh, structure. You want it to be able to expand, but not shatter. Now, I found that when I use traditionally lubed bullets, they are more picky on the alloy, uh, alloy hardness, and those types of things, and also the the bullet fit. Now you're gonna wanna fit the bullet to the bore anyways, even if you powder coat them, but I've found that powder coated bullets are make, make for a less picky gun, if that makes sense. So even though you still should learn about alloying and, and bullet fit for your bore, it's, it's easier for beginners to make yeah. bullets that just work yards. when you powder coat. Now, along those same lines, with bullet fit, sometimes you have a bore that's a little bit too big for your mold or your mold cast too, too small for your bore. And one of the benefits of powder coating is that you can increase the thickness of your bullet by a few thousandths and sometimes it's just enough added thickness to make, well, the difference between having a bullet that fits your, your bore and one that doesn't. And what I, one thing I've noticed about bullet casting and you know the bullet fit for the bore is that the easiest way to get leading in your barrel is to shoot undersized bullets in your in your barrel. And so by powder coating, a lot of times, if you have a mold that casts too small, you can increase the size just enough so that it fits just right. It's not the case with every scenario, but it does add a little bit of thickness that can sometimes help. Okay, and I just remembered one of the other benefits of using a powder coated bullet is that the types of designs you can use are a little bit different too. When you coat your bullets, it opens up the ability to use grooveless bullet molds, which cast grooveless bullets. And why would you want a grooveless bullet? There, there's a lot of debate out there on like increased pressure because of the, the, bearing, the increased bearing um, length. But what I've noticed is that you can if you want a heavier bullet that is about the same size in the case, you can do that. So with a grooveless bullet, you can have a heavier bullet that's about the same size when you load it, or you can shorten the bullet, which leaves more room for the powder if you have a grooveless bullet. So those two options, um, adding more weight for the same size or 
regaining some of your powder space in the case and keeping the weight the same. Those are benefits for powder coating because that means you can use grooveless bullets. Now, I will say <laughs> on this, this next reason is, is not always true on every type of lube, but I have in the past lubed traditionally using some, well, I've used both the tr traditionally lubed with like beeswax and then also uh, with a tumble lube. And one of the times I was using some tumble lube, I think I was using 45, 45, 10, and it might've been for the taco apocalypse video, but we went out to shoot and the ammo was in the sun and the lube started melting because it was getting really hot. And so that would be a definite advantage for the powder coating because the powder coating will not get hot, like, or it will not, when it gets hot, get sticky or melt. So that's, that's a bit, well, hot from regular hot weather. I mean, if you got the powder coat really hot, then you could probably melt it, but the sun's not gonna do it to it. Now, another reason that I like to powder coat my bullets is because by powder coating the bullet, it kind of puts it somewhere between the loading range of, you know, just a regular plain base bullet and a gas checked bullet. And when you powder coat the bullet, it protects the base enough so that you can push the pressures and velocities a little bit more than just a regular plain base bullet without having to go up to the gas check range. And gas checks cost extra money. So if you can find that perfect load that's beyond a regular plain base bullet and you know push it a little bit harder but still not quite the gas check range, then you know, powder coating will save you a bunch of money on gas checks if you normally buy your gas checks and pay for that. Now I've heard of people who have said that they push plain base powder coated bullets at gas check velocities and don't get leading. But in my experience, if you, if you really push them on the top end, then you lose a lot of your accuracy unless you have that gas check on there. But Different people have different experiences, so take that for what it's worth. One of my last reasons for powder coating versus traditionally lube or traditional lubing bullets is that you can get powder coating, like a good powder coating powder for really pretty cheap. Like if you, if you look hard enough, you can get a good powder for under 10 bucks for a pound. And a pound lasts a long time, or at least for me, a pound does a lot of bullets versus, you know, the traditionally loop stuff, which, you know, you can kind of go through that uh, quite a bit faster if you're using like a wax, like beeswax or something, then it's, it feels like you're always having to, to buy more lube to, I don't know, at least for me, that's how it seemed. And so it's not very expensive to do powder coating and all you really need is like a toaster oven to bake it on to cure it. And you can get those on classifieds for like, I, I found them for like 10 or 15 bucks from like the newlywed couples who try out a toaster oven that they got for their wedding and then they realize that they don't even use it and then I buy it for like 10 or 15 bucks. So it's really cheap to get into and it's really not that difficult to, of a process to do, so. So now I'd like to just go over a couple of reasons why you may consider not powder coating bullets. And one of those is accuracy. I know that the cast bullet competitions, they, you don't see really anybody using powder coated bullets. And the, the people who compete are casting very precise, perfect bullets and they are using traditional lube. And so if you want the best accuracy, I'd have to say that that probably goes towards the traditionally lubed bullets. And, you know, along with casting them perfectly and choosing the right alloy and choosing the right lube for the velocity and cartridge that you're using. So 
accuracy probably goes towards the traditionally lubed cast bullets. Oh, and another reason that I thought of, of why you may consider not powder coating or using or trying to use traditional lube is on some of the classic bullet designs, they are really incompatible with powder coating. And when I say that, I'm specifically talking about the bullets that have a bore writing section. And, you know, an example of that one would be probably like, say, a, a 311 299, where you have, you know, you have your regular driving bands and stuff, but you have a portion of the nose that is either 0 0.299 or 3, 300 that is designed to ride on the bore and maybe slightly engraved, but there's the bullet design is is set so that that bore riding section rides along the bore and if you powder coat it or coat it with something then it's going to make that section too thick and so then when you try and chamber that cartridge it's going to jam up on the inside your barrel so if you have a bunch of those designs then you're not going to want to powder coat those specifically if you have a lubricizer and you already have access to cheap lube, then you may consider not powder coating. But for me and my the majority of my shooting purposes, it makes more sense for me to powder coat my cast bullets and enjoy my suppressors and shooting them quiet and all of, all of those reasons that I mentioned before. Now I'm not saying one way is better than the other, but in this particular case, the powder coating just makes way more sense for me. So anyways, Warthog, I hope you watched this video and made it to the end, but I hope it was helpful to you. And if you guys have any other reasons, pros and cons of powder coating versus traditional lube, then go ahead and leave a comment below and let us all know what, what you got to say. I've talked enough, so it's time to end this video. Talk to you later, guys. Until next time.